Good evening, everyone. We will call the East Ridge Agenda Work Session June 13th, 6 p.m. to order. Ms. Middleton, roll call, please. We may have a, an issue with the microphone. Here. All right. Underneath old business, item A, we will have a public hearing for ordinance number 1105, fiscal year 2020 budget ordinance. A public hearing? Uh, Anything you want to? No. Uh, we have to advertise that within 10 days of the, uh, the second reading of the budget by state law, which is why that's on there for our budget. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's okay. You ready to go into the other? Yeah. Okay. So then item B would be ordinance 1105, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of East Street, Tennessee, making and fixing the annual appropriations of several departments of the city for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019, ending June 30, 2020. That would be second and final reading. Right. And this is literally just the budget, the appropriation, which is the budget ordinance. Now it's the first reading tonight, so second reading would be two weeks. That's correct. Any questions, Council? 1105 and 1106. What is 1106 then? 1106 is the revenue ordinance. That is the ordinance that affixes the tax rate, the property tax rate for the citizens. I'll read this reversed. Okay. So now item six it is ordinance 1106. In order to the City Council of the City of East Street, Tennessee, to provide for the general revenue there, thereof for the fiscal year 2019 to 2020 to be known as the general revenue ordinance for said year. That would be second and final reading as passed. No. That's just the property tax. Thank you, sir. Any questions on that, Council? Last year you had it together. This year I've split it up. I'm used to having it split up just for legal reasons because you want to put your budget together, then you want to be able to approve the the uh, revenue to be able to fund the budget. Thank you, sir. Item D under old business would be ordinance number 1107, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of East Street, Tennessee to amend ordinance number 1078 entitled an ordinance to provide revenue for the City of East Street, Tennessee for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 to June 30, 2019, appropriating the same to the payment of expenses of the municipal government, changing the revenues of the state street and aid fund, grant fund, debt service fund, and by changing the expenditures of the general fund, state street aid fund, grant fund, debt service fund, and capital improvement fund. That would be second and final reading. And before Diane talks, I told her uh, next year we're going to have a short caption. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll make it shorter next year. This is the final one of the year where I'm cleaning up different areas. And if I think we're going, you know, we may go over in some, this is where I'm just moving some money away. And then we've had some revenues come in that were good, so we're increasing revenues also. But not the general fund, just some of the other funds. And it should not change between now, between first and second reading, but it might if something happened. Okay. Any questions, Council? Thank you. Under new business, item A, public hearing for an unnumbered ordinance rezoning 403 St. Parks Avenue from R1 Residential District to 01 Office District. Tax map 1570-R-015. I'll combine the two together. 
second oh, okay. deals with the public hearing for that actual order. Okay, then the, uh, then the ordinance itself, the rezoning of 403 St. Mark's Avenue from Marlin Residential District to 01 Office District. That would be the first reading. That's right. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, Ms. Jennifer uh, sent her petition to Eastridge Planning Commission the last meeting to rezone the property located at 403 South St. Mark's from R1 Residential to 01 Office District. Their plan is if the uh, if the zoning approval goes through and moves forward through Council, then they'll also come to us for a building permit to construct um, a 60 by 30 expansion basically to their office uh, center that they already got. Um, they're just looking to expand and expand the office district one one parcel. Council, do you have any questions? I see none. I'll move to item C, public hearing for uh, number of ordinance for the rezoning of 3400 Ringo Road from C2 Commercial District to RZ-10 Lot Line Residential District and RT-1 Residential Townhouse District Tax Map 168D-C-003 and the ordinance that follows. Yes, Mayor Council, this, uh, this parcel of what used to be, I believe, the old Jim Walters home site um, up at the corner of Blackhawk and Ringo Road. Um, Mr. Evan Green petitioned the Planning Commission to rezone this property uh, from C2 General Commercial District to RZ10 Lot Line and Residential Townhome District. Uh, the plan is it's actually going to be its own small community up front, which is General Commercial District, will have two businesses um, with live work units, so they'll have a residential unit above and then a few uh, residential zero lot line homes and then we'll also turn into townhomes. So we're hoping that that project, which is a, a the plan that's been submitted is a is a nice plan for that area and which will help hopefully stimulate that area and that's what we've been looking for for a long time. We're hoping that it'll be the, the catalyst that really changes that upper end of Ringo Road. Council, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Either one of these zones will be changing to, does it qualify for short-term short rental? Uh, so basically the way that those are are uh, not allowed in RT1, RZ1, anything with the residential part. Now in the commercial part of it, yes, they would be able to do that. that would require a, an amendment to the short-term vacation rental ordinance. Well, you could you could condition the zoning and carve out if you wanted to. You made part of the motion to carve out the short-term vacation rental. You could do that. Now, I understand if you do that, it will need to be sent back down to the planning commission changing at that point um, the text of what the, cert of what the Planning Commission certified or approved or voted or disapproved. Yeah, and, and the only units that would be uh, available for the short-term vacation rental would be the live-work units, which are above the commercial, uh, the two commercial occupancies that would be built, which is what they're designed for anyway. All right, so you have the two commercial buildings that's facing the Ringo Road. Yes. How many units are they looking to put above both? I believe it's one per. One per? Okay. <laughs> There has not been a discussion about that becoming a short-term vacation rental, but not ruling it out either. So that's not the initial intent, but to Mr. Cagle's point, it could happen. Absolutely. Uh, I have a question if I could. <clears throat> if there was a desire in the future to, give, to, uh, to work on more regulation on the short-term rental, as long as anything was done before the construction or this being used as such, it could still be done via an ordinance or something at a future date, could it not? Right. Yep. We can come back and amend the ordinance. Yes, sir. Which you, can't, you just can't take away a right, but if they're not using it as that now or before we do anything, we're fine. Uh, it would be much cleaner to update. Before we, uh, yeah. It'd be much cleaner to update the ordinance than add the condition to the zoning for that use. Great, great. Yeah. Can 
reason for that is I've been reading negative comments from Chattanooga with their short term minerals over in Red Bank, the same thing. Red Bank started out, they loved it because they were making more money off of it. But then now it's come back saying it's not worth the money. And the newspaper articles that I've been reading. So I just want to actually want to get, it, get no more out here in these streams than we've already got. I understand. I, I have mixed emotions. Sometimes I think some of the short-term rentals properties kept a little better due to the fact that uh, they're, they're turned over and they're able to monitor them more closely. But I understand the other side as well. I can give you one example. There's an article in the newspaper about after the short-term people left that Monday morning, the owner come in, the place was wrecked, drugs all over the place. Any other questions concerning item C and D? Uh, under new business item E, we have a public hearing and an ordinance on 1108. Rezoning of tax map 169 E D 008, proposed Red Wolves facility from C2 Commercial District, O2 Office District, and R1 Residential District to C4 Plan Commercial Center District. And the ordinance um, 1108 is the ordinance of the City Council of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee to amend the zoning regulation, the zoning map of the City of East Ridge, Tennessee, so as to rezone the property located at tax map 169E D 008 from C2 Commercial District, O2 Office District, and R1 Residential District to C4 Plan Commercial Center District. It would be the first reading. That's correct, Mayor Council. This uh, this project is currently the the Chattanooga Red Wolves development um, on the acreage currently owned by Henry Lucan that adjoins I seventy five in the Lansdale Park area. Uh, Mr. Scott requested the zoning case be moved forward to Council for review and approval. After approval um, from the Planning Commission at the last meeting, this would be changing it from R one Residential District uh, C two and adding it to the C four Plant Commercial Center District. Any questions, Council? Here we are, we're voting on something this part of this is without hearing the citizens' point of view on it. We're going to, before we're doing the public hearing, and uh, I've heard two or three yeas, and I've heard three or four no's, so I'd like to have a public hearing up here where we can all be transparent on what we're doing, and so the vote on it tonight, people leave here, then they can't say, well, there's no sense showing up next week in public hearing because they've already made up their mind. So, I just can't see how to vote on something without the public hearing being prior to the vote, even though the first vote is not the binding vote. I understand. No. Okay. I understand that. Um, I know that during the planning commission that they approved and they had um, citizen comment and um, residential comments, and they advertised that it was uh, going to be first reading tonight at the regular council meeting. That's why it's actually in red. And um, I was going to ask if we were going to move this forward. Um, we do have the public hearing scheduled for the 27th. Um, as you know, we could be revoked on the second reading. And we're not uh, preventing anyone from coming and speaking at the public hearing and more than welcome to have anyone oppose or uh, supporting it. So, anything you'd like to add, Chairman? Of the no, I, I agree with you, Mayor. Um, yeah, all the citizens had an opportunity to come and, and, and voice their concerns during the planning commission meeting and they will have another chance to to do so before the uh, final reading. That's right. And, and they did, the public notices went out advising of such of, of the public hearing that will take place at the next council meeting. Helen, one thing to add, on the state law does require 15 days notice, which right. the public notice went out last week, it would be within the 15 days 
on June 27th. Actually, I think you'll have had about close to 19 to 20 days that will have passed by. But that said, Councilman, um, if you're going to move this up, make sure I have a vote here to bring it up to the regular agenda, noting that, as you said, Councilman, it is just keep it on the agenda. It will be there next time for the public hearing to occur before the second final reading. Let me ask you about the statement though there. You put the 15 day notice in, are we putting out that it's for the first vote or the second vote? I don't know, I haven't seen it. Put it no. in. I mean, how many residents are being? It's for the public hearing. Just for the public hearing. 15 days for the public hearing. Not for the vote. When you vote on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's for the public hearing. Okay. Just for the public hearing. Okay. 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 Okay. So all we're doing is advertising the public hearing for it, but we're not advertising that we're going to take a vote on it, first vote. We're going to, well, that would be the second vote the way we've got it now. I don't think there's an advertisement one way or the other. It's just saying public hearing relative to the rezoning request. There's not. And, and it's the, basically the same process for the Planning Commission, uh, the same public notice, the same public hearing. It's basically the same. It just transfers it from the Planning Commission to City Council. Do we have any other discussion? We have had a request to move this up to the uh, regular agenda session tonight, so if, um, I will entertain a motion if someone would like to. I'll make a motion to move this up to the agenda session tonight. A second. We have a motion from Council Member Witt and a second by Council Member Chauncey. Do we have any other discussion? Roll call, Ms. Milton. Vice Mayor Halton? Yes. Council Member Cagle? Yes. Council Member Chauncey? Yes. Council Member Witt? Yes. Mayor Williams? Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Take a step back just for a minute. Sure. I have one question on the last one here. What is a level five development intensity? It's got a highlighted note here. It says, I would include comment on what level five. Yeah, and I had that in the Planning Commission packet. So basically, level one through level five is a density based on the type of area that it is. So if you have an agricultural land, it's less dense. If you have a highly populated area, it's more dense. So it's just the density levels, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What? Good clarification. That would be uh, item eight that would add to the regular session later. Just wanted to make a note of that. Then item G, an unnumbered resolution under new business um, approval of memorandum of agreement with the Regional Organization of Crime Information Center. Mr. Allen. As Mayor Campbell, Council ROCIC is a resource for us and we are a resource for them for the exchange of information on investigation uh, investigation of organized crime and the information there. Do you serve it? No, the cost associated with this is just simply a memorandum of agreement. Awesome. Any questions, Council? Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Um, that is all that we have on the working agenda at this time, but I believe we have a couple other items yes. we'd like to add. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I have uh, two additional items that I want to add for the work session for the next agenda for the June 27th meeting. Uh, these two things have uh, come up during this week. Um, uh, the first item deals with the Pioneer Frontier Park with the um, playground and the splash pad that we have out there. Um, we received notification that um, from the, the company dealing with the splash pad uh, part of this that they would like a letter of intent from the, uh, the mayor towards purchasing equipment and they would like something before July 1st just for the letter of intent because supposedly there's a tariff that's going to be put into place on that date which is going to make the equipment more expensive. But if we have that um, letter of intent done now uh, for that equipment, and note this is not the contract, it's the letter of intent, that um, they will be able to reserve it and hold the splash pad equipment 
conveyance of the tariff at the, at the cost that it is now. Is that correct, Amanda? Yes. It saves about, I believe, $18,000. $18,000. So basically, we're talking of a difference of, because um, a difference of 220, roughly 220691 right now is the quote just for the, the splash pad and stuff, uh, items. After the tariff, that'll go up to about $238,148. So you're talking, like she said, about $18,000 difference. And it's, it's a letter of intent, but I felt it needed to come to the, the, uh, the council to discuss for approval for the mayor to be able to sign such an item. I have a question, but I want to ask council first. Does the council have any questions? Yeah, I, I, I do. From what you're saying, we won't be legally bound contractually. Uh, no. Good faith. Letter of intent. Correct. Do you want to that? Yes, please. Um, no, we would not be contractually obligated. This is just helping us hold that price, um, kind of like a shaking hands agreement with the company. So. Um, because of the tariffs that if we don't have something in place now because we still are waiting for the contracts with the state on the LPRF grant, we don't have an actual agreement at this time. So this is just helping us hold those prices. Any other questions? My question is, you mentioned splash pad. Is that only the equipment for the splash pad or is that also the equipment for the so the, the playground equipment is not correct right. <laughs> impacted by the staff. Yeah, and I have Fred Weichel here with uh, Game Time, and he just said that no, it's just for the splash pad. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then uh, the other item is, and this came to Amanda's. Don't go too far. Uh, this came to her attention uh, today. today with your meeting with the Southeast Tennessee Development District. As you know, we are already in the middle of a multimodal uh, grant right now for the, uh, the eastern part of Ringgold Road. Um, there is the opportunity for us to apply for the next phase for this grant to be able to get state funding at 95%, 5% city, just to, do, to get the application out. The application has to be turned in by the end of June, I think it's June 28th. It's after our next meeting, but I want to put on here to be able to get permission from the council to be able to apply for that um, by June 28th. So it's fine. It, it doesn't have to go on tonight. It's fine right. going on in two weeks, but I want to add it to the work yeah. session agenda since I do that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any questions concerning that? And it's the same grant that we apply for every year. And like uh, City Manager Sorcy said, it's for a million dollars. Uh, our part would only be $50,000. This would go from McBrien Road uh, East to Swope Drive. We've applied for this section before and just haven't been successful yet. There are two different types of grants, the transportation um, alternatives program and also the multimodal. Uh, transportation alternatives, you don't get as good of a return as far as funding. It's an 80-20 and it's only for construction, but with multimodal, it's the entire project from start to finish at a 95-5 rate. And that is one of the really competitive grants to get. And that's what we're hoping for. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. That is all for the, to my knowledge, correct? For the working agenda. Um, I'll start uh, on Councilman Cagle's side. Do you have anything this time? I will save it for the council. Okay. Council Mary Elton? No, nothing at this time. Council Member Chauncey? No, sir. Thank you. Council Member Witt? No, thank you. Do you have anything? No, I'm good. I don't have anything either. I will adjourn this work session and then we will resume with the regular session in about five minutes. Thank you. Yeah.